Are you ready for a Mission Impossible? Today is the day where we are making a full, entire, comfortable, double couch out of cardboard! What? This is amazing! I can't believe this is happening! Yep, I did spend the last week experimenting with cardboard. We already did the chair, this one over here if you want to go and check it out. But this time it's going to be completely different because the cardboard is not gonna be the statement piece of our furniture. It's gonna be invisible. Nobody, nobody is gonna know that our couch is made out of cardboard. Yes, it's gonna be a secret between us, me and you. We're not gonna tell anyone. A few weeks ago, I asked you guys here on the channel to vote and decide which couch I'm gonna do this time. The challenge was between these two different couches. And at the end, this one was the winner. It was a tight competition. It was so exciting for me because every day I was counting the votes again to find out which one was gonna win. And at the end, we are gonna make the half moon couch. Let's start. I decided to do something that would fit the little corner of my room but also can sit three people. So I went for one meter 30. But guys, keep in mind that everything I do can be adjusted to what you need. So to the size that you want. If you want a two meters couch, do two meters. If you want a tinier, do a tinier. I also went and marked seven centimeters of depth of the area where I wanted to add the back of the seat. If you're new to my channel, welcome! And don't forget to subscribe to the incredible tutorials every single week. I want the seat and the back of the couch to be one entire piece so that I'm sure that it's never gonna pull off when you put pressure on the back, while the bottom, I'm sure that the gravity and your weight on itself is gonna keep it stable. So that's why I'm gonna draw now the bottom shape and then all the connection pieces are gonna be one piece, bottom and top. So how do we make sure that this carton is actually gonna hold your weight? What I did is draw vertical lines every six centimeters and also wrote down how long the line was so to keep it as a reference. It's working. <laughs> It's working! It's working! I feel so confident about this. Here I'm giving you a better view of the measurements that I did and the drawings, but actually it completely depends on the initial shape that you draw. You just have to draw straight lines and measure them. After that, you go and cut out the base of our couch so that the entire structure of everything else that we're gonna build out. My cardboard was not long enough, so I actually had to attach two cardboards together in order to make a 1 meter 30 couch. Let me explain you what is happening now. We have tons of little stripes everywhere and all that this line means is how long, how deep the cardboard that we're gonna cut is. But we have to add the height that I want my couch to be tall, 40 centimeters, and the back where we put our arm, I want it 65. So what happens now is this. Every time I see a line, I'm gonna draw 35 times 40, that is the height of my couch, so that's what I'm gonna draw on this one. And every time that there's also the back of my couch, I'm instead gonna do the 52 of this line, for example, plus 30, 40 of the height of my couch, but on the back, the last seven centimeters, I'm instead gonna go to 65. I'm gonna show you now what I'm gonna do with all this cardboard. Basically, you see me here trying twice the measurements that I told you. You see I marked the height, I marked the depth that is different for every little segment of the couch because it's a curvy couch. And then on every corner, I go and add a curve because I don't want the end of the couch to be squared. I want to have more a soft shape. There you see now that this is the sitting area with the back of the couch. I copy it twice. Actually, I will copy it three times for every single piece. So when I stick them together, it's going to be more stable. I also put a letter that connects and then help me understand which drawing connects to which line on the cardboard and then I cut it again. Here I'm doing the C and I'll do the D and the E and the F. Basically, it's tons of them to draw. But don't make the mistake of doing also this area with the back seat. I remind you that only in this area over here, so after this curve, all the lines mean the entire depth. So here, for example, it's 45 centimeters. I'm gonna do a 45 centimeters cube and not a uh, back seat area anymore. I'm gonna go straight. Let's do that. Same identical technique, but without the back. So yes, I'm measuring the height, I'm measuring the depth, and I'm not adding the curve of the back. 
You will see me taking out the C again just to position it on top and make sure that the curve of the end of the couch is identical so that the shape will maintain itself. And then we take out the glue. Okay guys, so what's the cool thing about the glue is that not only if I put two cardboard together, it's obviously gonna be stronger than doing it with only one. Yes, I did more. You see B and B and I have another B over there. Three of each other one of them. But besides the fact that two of them are obviously stronger than one, it's the fact that glue itself is gonna make your cardboard stronger. Like in every tutorial I do, we reach the boring section where you have to do the same thing repetitively over and over again. So we have to now glue together every time the same shape, one on top of the other. I'll do this for the base and usually you have to put something heavy on top but I had tons of pieces of cardboard so placing them all around my apartment there was no chance. So I decided that instead of putting something heavy on top, I would just tape them together so that they would glue in the correct position. Then I did the same thing with all the other little pieces of the cardboard and I was done. Look. They were like, I don't know, I didn't count them. And just when you think that you had enough about glue and you don't want to see it anymore, we take out even the stronger gun. There we go with the hot glue gun and we're gonna attach all the pieces that we created on top of the base, exactly following the lines. I also cut it a bunch of this ones. So to give it stability, you see it inside? Now, luckily enough, we have a guideline already drawn on the base of our couch and we just have to stick the B on the B, the L on the L, any letter on top of the right one. And also put these little tiny ones in between so to give it stability. Yes, I did draw at the beginning a straight horizontal line, but I decided that it was a lot easier to make tiny ones to put them inside instead of a long one. I dare you to tell me that this is not the coolest thing you've ever seen. Okay, okay, I'll continue. We now have a super strong base and what we need to do is just curate the perfect outside shape of the couch. So what we're doing now is creating like a sort of fence all around the internal shape that we did. So I'm gonna add uh, the hot glue gun on the external side and then wrap it around with the cardboard itself. When I reach the external side where the seating area is, I will obviously have to go lower and that's why I tape it just to be sure that it's drying in the correct position, not because you really need the tape. And then you're gonna cut out the extra piece that is too tall. I'm gonna do this also for all the front area, wrap it completely around till you don't have any more. This holds where the foam would fall inside and the texture of the fabric so that it becomes almost and smooth. Because I'm a smart girl and like always, I don't trust myself, I decided to tape all to the bottom so to be sure that the shape would be extremely stable and that it wouldn't dry in the wrong position. For the top side instead, that is more roundy, we're gonna have to do some little cuts on the top so that when you pull it, you draw slightly the cardboard and make it more round on the top so that it's not gonna be squared, but it's gonna have this rounded and more dramatic and elegant shape to follow. Guys, are you looking at this? It's actually easy. It's just a lot of repetitions of a suggestion, but the result looks amazing. I was actually wondering, where are you from? Just put a comment down below with a flag of your country. Okay, guys, this is so exciting. We basically built the entire piece that we have to do with the cardboard. You can totally, totally, totally see the shape. And now all we have to do is to put foam, put fabric on top, and be sure that nobody is gonna understand there's cardboard inside. You're wondering if I can sit on it. You think it's gonna fall? <laughs> Let's try this. Three, two, three, two, one, go. Yes! <laughs> I would say it holds. Let's go and cover it up. <laughs> is one thing but comfort is another one so I decided to spice up my couch with a little bit of foam this is only two centimeters thick and it's gonna make the back seat and the sitting area way more comfortable so what I did was simply glue it on top of the back you use your hot glue gun again I cut it up the same height and I'm just gonna round it around the area that I need to cover once you reach the external side we are finally gonna go and cover all this with fabric that you can't stick with fabric. I will show you now the best trick of your life. 
Ah, if you need to staple, cardboard is not gonna hold. So what you can do is take out your glue again and start putting napkins on top of it. This is gonna make the cardboard way more sturdy and it's gonna hold all your siblings. Guys, this is literally the most exciting thing that I discovered this year in the DIY world because all the time that I wanted to build furniture with cardboard, I was like, how am I gonna staple the stuff on it? I would need to add plastic, I would need to add something. Instead, no, this hack is amazing. You just add glue, a napkin. Once it dries, absolutely solid. You can staple anything you want on top of here. And if it's not strong enough, just add a third layer on top. It's gonna be rock solid. This shows you that now cardboard can be used exactly as if it was wood, but for like one-tenth of the price. Now, you can finally staple your fabric around the cardboard and you are done. For the front, first I needed to place a straight sheet to cover the holes so that the stability would go also on the front and you wouldn't feel it on your butt when you're sitting. And this is basically the result. But after we made the shape, we still have to bring the comfort back. So, we're adding foam also on the bottom. Following exactly the same shape, I just placed it on the floor and then I started to trace the line on top of the foam. I'm gonna draw it and then cut it away. Oh, this is so cute. And just cut everything out so we can place them one on top of the other and glue them together. Once we have our cardboard and we have the foam of the same shape, we finally have to do also the fabric to wrap it around. So I'm gonna do it a bit wider so I added like five, six centimeter on the shape of our base and then you can go and staple it inside because I have already strengthened the cardboard so it's just super easy. You're gonna have to do a lot of little cuts because when it's not a squared shape but it's more rounded, to wrap it around is a lot easier when you make little cuts exactly like the different that we used on the back, on the cardboard, where we did the cuts. I had to measure now the front of our couch because it wasn't 40 centimeters anymore, it became 43 because there was the height of the foam that I added. Now, to cover all the extra cardboard on the back and the front, I will make an extra layer, cut of the same size, and I made sure to cut only till where the end of the back of the couch ends, because on the original, look over here, there's a sewing in the connection between the front and the back. And that's why we're gonna do it with two separate pieces. As you can see, gluing squared shapes of fabric is way easier because you don't have to do any extra cuts. You just add the glue on the cardboard, fold the lap of material that you need, and you're basically done. It's super simple. Now we are gonna use all this fabric wrapped in the cardboard to wrap a second layer on top of our couch. And this is basically gonna be the finishing line that is also gonna cover all the ugly stapling that we had done on the back of our couch, making it look so finished, so perfect, and without seeing all the disgusting stuff that we have on the inside. It's literally done and I cannot wait to show you the result. It looks incredible. I spent like pennies to do this. Before I show you the result, don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, I also had extra cardboard. I consumed way less than I thought. So this means that we're also gonna try a different model for next time. If you have su suggestions, just leave them in the comment down below and I will totally do them for the next episode. Let's go and see the result.